running now and I ain't never going back down. Welcome to The Rise. I'm Bryant McFadden. On this edition of The Rise, we get to catch up with one of those great South Carolina football products that took his talents all the way to the NFL. A guy who grew up in Columbia, South Carolina, was an All-American at Florida State, the best university in the country, by the way. He ended up in the Baltimore Ravens ring of honor. Unfortunately, I'm a Steeler. He's a Raven. We know how that rivalry plays out. But no other than the great living legend. Let's give him his flowers right now. Peter Bulwer, welcome to the rise. Pete, how you doing? How you feeling? All is well, Brian. Thank you so much for having me on. Even though you're a Pittsburgh Steeler, I won't hold that against you. You got uh, garnet and gold in you, so so you're all good. You're covered with that. No question, no question. Thank you for joining me. This is a, a beloved episode for myself. I grew up watching you, and we know so many fans would love to hear what you've been up to since your playing days ended. But let's go to the beginning. Let's take it back to thing, how things got started for you growing up in Columbia, South Carolina, as I mentioned in your intro. Uh, what was your family like? You know, Tell us a little bit about your upbringing growing up in Columbia. Yeah, absolutely. I was very fortunate. Uh, I had a an older brother, an older sister, and a younger brother, and all of us we played sports. Uh, my older brother, um, he was um, yeah, he was a defensive tackle. He ended up getting a scholarship to play football at Georgia Tech. 1990 won a national championship. Uh, my sister was a four-time state track champion, and uh, she went on to Notre Dame, and uh, she ran track at Notre Dame. My younger brother played football at Florida State, and so growing up, I just didn't want to be the weakest link. <laughs> and I, I didn't want to be the one that, that, that messed it up. And so uh, my family, they were uh, they, they challenged, they pushed us. Uh, I was very fortunate to be around other athletes that really, really helped help me get to where I am. And so, again, uh, in the Bower household, we took we took our sports very, very seriously. And with that being said, who introduced you to the game of football and when did you start playing organized football? Yeah, I mean, ever since I was, I can remember. Uh, I, I grew up in Columbia, South Carolina, so all we had we had the Gamecocks, and then we had Clemson up the road. And so ever since I was young, I remember just watching the Gamecocks play on TV and going to Williams Bryce Stadium, and just you know just developing a love uh, for the sport and just a, a love for you know how the game was played. You know, I started playing probably in the third grade. And it may be even before that, we were just in the yard. You know how we did it, just got in the yard, got a football out and just a Nerf ball and uh, tackle the man with the ball. And just doing that, I mean, either you, you, you do that and you love it or you do it and you, and you hate it and you, and you run and do something different. And I always loved it. And so I, ever since I was young, I was always playing sports and watching sports and watching football. Yeah, and, and, and growing up, you know, did you have an individual that you looked up to when it came to being in athletics or playing the game of football? Yeah, I mean, as I said before, I was a Gamecock fan, so Sterling Sharp was was the big big superstar, and so just watching him and watching how he played the game, and just when he came out of USC and then going to Green Bay and just being all pro and just being, you know, the athlete that he was, uh, it was just uh, it was something that was was awesome to be able to look at, and uh, again, he was you know he was a receiver and I was I was on the defensive side of the ball, but just. Just seeing a guy that, that was local, a guy that was playing for the Gamecocks, make it to the to the NFL and just do great things was just was some somebody that we looked up to and he was kind of a hero for us as we grew up. And talk about being on the defensive side of the football field. Uh, you played your high school ball at Spring Valley High School. You were an All-State pick in 1992. Uh, you recorded 132 tackles, 14 sacks, and blocked two punts and was named one of the top 50 prospects by many recruiting services. But with all of the success you had on the football field, Pete, what was it like around your home during your recruiting process? Well, um, you know, academics played a huge role in in in, in our in our household. Um, and my brother's an electrical engineer now. My my sister's uh, a doctor, and so again, we didn't you know we we love sports, but we didn't we didn't think that we would be able to make a living doing it. And so mm -hmm. the focus was always on academics and the focus was always on, can you get to school and you, can you get a degree and not only get a degree, but can you actually get a job and, and, and support yourself and hopefully one day support a family. And so as, as much as we emphasize sports, uh, the academic piece was really the thing that we were, we were going for. And it, that's, you know, the conversations 
was when, when you're picking a school, just make sure that when you get the degree, you can get a, get a job. And so um, uh, very fortunate uh, for my parents, you know, giving me the perspective. Now, I was fortunate that I didn't I didn't have to use my degree for a while. I was I was <laughs> able to go to uh, go to the NFL and, and, and play football. Uh, but yeah. but again, you know, the, the foundation of, of who we were was uh, focus on academics. And if sports happens, that's good. But you always have something that you can rely on. More with Peter Boulware after these messages. He told my parents and he told me, he said, look, I don't know what type of football player that you'll be, but know that if you come out of Florida State, I'm gonna try to make you into a man. Welcome back to The Rise with Peter Boulware. You know, your high school career comes to an end. You're getting recruited by the who's of who in college football. But tell us, why did you choose Florida State? Yeah, to be honest with you, I wasn't going to choose Florida State. Um, I didn't even really know where Tallahassee was. I mean, I, you know, I had heard of Florida State. They were a good program. But, I mean, I grew up in Columbia. I love the Gamecocks. But, yeah. uh, you know, the Gamecocks were 0-10 at the time. I think Sparky Woods was on the way out. He was getting fired. Uh, I had gone down to the University of Miami, and uh, Dennis Erickson was one of the first that, that offered me a scholarship. So, really, my focus was on the, on the Hurricanes. And uh, they were a top program. And in my mind, that's where I knew I wanted to go. It wasn't until Bowden, Bobby Bowden came to my high school and then came into my house. And yep. uh, if you had a chance to meet him, he is the ultimate closer and he is the ultimate recruiter. And when he gets around mom and dad and he talks about family and he talks about academics and he talks about faith. And really, you know, the thing that he really talks least about is football. And he told my parents and he told me, he said, look, I don't know what type of football player that you'll be, but, but know that if you come out of Florida State, I'm going to try to make you into a man. And I'm going to treat you just like I treat one of my own boys. You know, and that resonated with me. Uh, and that resonated with my, my, uh, my mother and my father. And so just the presence that, that, that uh, Bobby had just coming in changed me. And I was like, that's a guy that I can follow. And so after that visit, I, uh, I came down to Florida State and just visited Tallahassee, visited the campus and just fell in love with what he was doing and how they were doing it. And ever since then, I was, uh, the story was written. I, I was a Seminole after that, but I just love Bowden and what he brought um, yeah. uh, to the program. I echo the same sentiments. Of course, me playing at Florida State, like you said, when he walked into your house, it was a wrap yep. because he had that type of persona about himself. Uh, your fr redshirt freshman season, Florida State won it all. Uh, but what did you learn from iconic guys like Derek Brooks that carried on through your career when those guys left? Yeah, I was very fortunate. Like you said, we won that national championship my, my, my freshman year. It, it was a kind of a blessing and a curse at the same time. As, as most freshmen come in, everybody wants to play and everybody wants to start. We all come with an ego and we all think we're super, super good. And when I got there as a freshman, I thought I was going to be super, super good. And I met Derek Alexander, Derek Brooks, William Floyd. And uh, I realized very quickly that my athletic ability and how I play the game was, was woefully short. And I had a lot of work to do. And to be on the level that those guys were at, I was nowhere close to that. And so uh, those guys took me up under the wing, but they didn't take it easy on me. I mean, you're yeah. on that football field, and if you get beat, you get beat. That's just the way it is. Which I loved about Florida State, two things will happen. Either you'll raise your game, you'll work hard, or you'll quit. And they'll, you'll be pushed out the way. And uh, the, the, the intensity there was, was incredible. People ask me all the time, what's the greatest game that you ever played at Florida State? And I'll say the greatest game I ever played at Florida State was at practice. There was no mm -hmm. game that was harder than practice. I mean, the, you know, my last year, the offensive tackles that I were, was going against on one side was Walter Jones, NFL Hall of Famer, and on the other side, Trey Thomas. And so wow. every day of practice, that was my game. And, yeah. uh, and it was funny, man. My, I was, it, it was tough to beat those guys. And I was like, man, I don't even think I'm a really, really good pass rusher. I'd get <laughs> to the games, and it felt like I was going against a high school team. But that was yeah. the intensity, and that was Florida State. I mean, if you could make it through practice, if you could, if you could win there – you could win anywhere and be great. And talking about your time at Florida State, uh, you were in that first group when Florida State first joined the ACC. Uh, did you guys have a feeling about dominating the league going into each camp, each season? Absolutely. And again, this sounds arrogant and prideful, but we didn't even think about the ACC. 
we thought about Miami, we thought about Florida, uh, Florida. Those are the only two games we thought about. When we first got to the ACC, it was like we got two games to play. You beat Miami, you beat Florida, you win the national championship. The rest of the games in the ACC were kind of like warm-up games. And mm. that, that was our approach. The four years I was there in the ACC, we, we dominated the ACC. We won every game except for one, you know. And so hats off to the, to the ACC, the level of competition. It, it, it's, it's risen. Uh, it's becoming a, a very, very good conference. But again, when Florida State was where it was, it was, I mean, we just, we kind of dominated the ACC and it was, we were going to win the, we were going to win that every year. We didn't really focus on that. We wanted to win the state championship and the national championship. No doubt, no doubt. And you look at your individual career, you know, when it came to being consistent, you were selected one of six defensive ends selected to the Sports Illustrated all 20th century college football team. What did that accolade mean to you? It was super special. You know, as we as I talked before, just growing up as a as a football fan and watching college football and watching the great ones come through. I mean, as a youngster, you never believe that's going to be you. Uh, and you know how it is in, in sports. Uh, any any play, any situation, it could be over. You could get hurt or you could do something that, that either hurts you and gets you out of the game or hurts you and makes you be not the same player that you are. And so um, football is very humbling. You know, so many things have to go right. You have to stay healthy. You have to be in the right system. Uh, you have to have, be surrounded around the right guys to to get to where you want to get to. And all those things happened for me at Florida State. Just played around the, the some of the greatest players, greatest coaches, uh, I was fortunate enough not to get hurt, and everything just kind of fell into place for me. So I'm thankful every day, and I thank God every day for the opportunity uh, that I had and, and the success that I had at Florida State. Moore Rise was one of the best defensive players of his generation after this. I mean, I know who I am. I know, know what we did, and just the memory of that is, is cool enough. Welcome back to The Rise. 1997 draft, you were the fourth overall selection by the Baltimore Ravens. You spent your entire career with the Ravens, your rookie season in 97, 11 and a half sacks. You were named Defensive Rookie of the Year. You played eight seasons, four Pro Bowls, became the franchise all-time leader in sacks. You talked about the success uh, high school-wise, collegiately, then going to the National Football League and just dominating like you did. But talk to us about Super Bowl 35 and how dominating your defense was that year. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. And again, we we knew at the beginning of the season we were built to win a Super Bowl, but we had so many distractions uh, that came our way, you know, and, and so we had to overcome a lot with that. Uh, we had an offense that was really just trying to find an identity. And uh, we, I remember, I think we went four, four games in a row where we did not score an offensive touchdown. And during that stretch, we were like, man, we're, Super Bowl was nowhere in our head. And we were just trying to find out who we were. But I think that that's what made us who we were because we were losing games like, you know, nine to three or six to zero. And, and, and Marvin Lewis, our defensive coordinator at the time, he never let us like pat ourselves on the shoulder and say, well, we're doing our job. Offense is not doing our job. It was the exact opposite. I mean, if we, you know, we got to the point where it was like, fine, you, you only gave up two field goals, but did you score on defense? What are we doing? What can we do to take ourselves to the next level? So even during that stretch where we were not scoring points, I mean, we kind of felt like as a defense, we, yeah, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna hold you under 17 points. Now we're gonna hold you under 10 points. Okay, that's not good enough. How do we score? And so we just kept, kept elevating our defense to the point where we, we kind of got to the end of the year. Offense kind of figured out who they were. And I tell you what, we were able to run through the playoffs and just really do some, some, some cool things. And so, again, typically you see Super Bowls won with, with high-powered high offenses or, yeah. or that. So, so it wasn't us. It was hardcore. We're going to bring our lunch pail, and we're going to just shut people down. And we were able to do it. And it was, it was just it was completely awesome being able to come back to Florida and to do it. And just if you look at some of the, the guys that we had on that defense, I mean, with our anchor, Ray Lewis, uh, Rod Woodson, Chris McAllister, you know, you know, uh, God bless Tony Saragusa, Sam Adams. We just had some studs, and mm. um, uh, Marvin Lewis and, and that that staff with uh, Rex Ryan and just Jack Del Rio. I mean, we were stacked on that side, and so just fun to be a part of that. Fun to be a part of that history-making moment. And uh, as I said before, I thank God every day for that opportunity to be able to do that. How often do you wear your Super Bowl ring? 
You know, I wear it every once in a while. I mean, again, I mean, it's, you know, I, I put it up, but every once in a while I wear it. I don't wear it all the time, you know, yeah. but again, it's just, I mean, I know who I am. I know, know what we did and just the memory of that is, is cool enough. And so every once in a while I'll, I'll dust the thing off and, and, I, and I'll put it on. <laughs> but, you know, again, not, you know, not many people have those things. You know, no when you have it, you no are you are a part of a, 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 an elite fraternity, and uh, it, it's just it's it's cool to be a part of it, and yeah. um, just so thankful to be able to, to to be in that category. Yeah, and speaking of rings, you were named to the Baltimore Ravens Ring of Honor in 2006. How special was that for you? Oh, awesome, awesome. I mean, just because of you look at the players, and again, we kind of we kind of kept the history of the old Baltimore Colts. You know, you look at the, the Johnny U's and, and just uh, just some of the great players that are, that are in that ring. Again, growing up, never in a million years that I think they'd be me. You know, so again, I'm humbled by the opportunity. Um, I'm humble, humbled that, 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 that I'm in that stadium. And every time I go, you know, I've got five kids. And so when you try to tell your stories to your kids at home, they don't believe you. They just think you're an old yeah. washed up person. So I can take yeah. them to the stadium and show my name up there. It kind of gives me a little credit and kind of gives me no question. A, a, a little bit to it to be able to say that. But it's just really, really cool. You know, and I, again, I'm thankful that, 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 that I was blessed with that opportunity. Coming up, life after football for Peter. Hopefully, you know, I can continue to do this and continue to serve my community and, and help more people. You are watching The Rise on Origin Sports. Now let's transition to, uh, I, I guess it's safe to say, it's the fourth quarter of your life, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the yep. first three quarters were basically growing up, playing the game of ball, taking it to the next level. Now it's life after football. Yep. You ran for public office in Florida. Any plans of running in the near future? Absolutely not. Um, I did it once, <laughs> you know, and again, I, I went in really, really green, just thinking that I was going to do super, super good. And I really, really realized what politics is all about. And mm -hmm. just the, you know, our political leaders, I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat. I just I've got a great respect for both sides of the aisle. And uh, I just so much respect that I know that I'm not cut out for it, that it is extremely hard work. And with my kids and what I'm doing in my life right now, it was it was good for me. I ran. I got a great perspective of what, you know, our public figures go for. And I feel like that, you know, I can make a difference doing other things uh, yeah. in, in our city and our state. And so that's where I'm going to focus my efforts. The governor also appointed you to the Florida Board of Education and mm -hmm. you started a private school. How is that yep. going for you? It's going great. I mean, again, I was fortunate, like I said, the go like you said, the governor did appoint me to that state board and I learned a, a lot from that. And um, as, as we talked about running for public office, I said, you know what, I, we all can do our part. My, my part will not be running for public office, but I'll serve kids and I'll serve our community. And uh, I, I had the mentality to, to start the school, not thinking that it'd be very big or not thinking that it'd go very far, but just trying to do my part. And uh, we've been doing it for 13 years. And wow. we've got 350 students in there, and we graduated the Community Leadership Academy in Tallahassee, Florida. Okay. And so okay. we've graduated two senior classes, and it has been awesome. Uh, I love our kids, I love our parents, and it just lets me know that you know you can make a difference, and you, you just have to figure out how God's wired you, figure out what's your part, and, and you make a difference. Yeah. But uh, as I said before, I live my dreams. I got an opportunity to do things that other people didn't do. Now, as you talk about the fourth quarter, this fourth quarter is about me serving and giving back. And like I said before, I've been doing it for 13 years, and I think we're helping kids. And so we will continue to do that. And I just I love doing it. And hopefully we can we can serve a lot more kids. Yeah. And as I talk to you right now, you know, visually, I see you. You're in your office, you know, of your yep. car dealership there in yep. Tallahassee. You know, that's right. that seems like that's, that's a fun gig to have as well. But talk, talk, talk to us a little bit about that process and how's that been going? How, how has that yeah. been going for you? Absolutely. It's been really going really, really good. Again, I, you know, I, I credit my parents and I, I, I credit the staff at Florida State just preparing me because as professional athletes, you know, it's not going to last forever. You know, even if you play two, three, four, five, even 10 years, your career will be short cut cut and you have to do something and so I, when I was playing I had the opportunity to invest in an automobile dealership 
and not knowing that I'd work there. I was just trying to park some money, but knowing yeah. too that I, I'm trying to, to set myself up for, for when, when it was all over. And so it's mm -hmm. been really, really good. I love the car business. It's super competitive. You know, as, as a professional athlete, I mean, if, if you work hard, you're competitive, uh, you're good with people, you can, you can, you can do well for yourself in this business. So, so I love it. Uh, we've had our issues, you know, with, with, with supply chain and with, with, with inventory, trying to get those things. But again, either you can make it an excuse or you can figure out yep. a way to, to get better and, and, and try to try to be successful. So hopefully, you know, I can continue to do this and continue to serve my community and hopefully we'll, we'll grow and, and help more people. Yeah. And if you need of a car while you're watching us right now, that's right. There go your man. Peter, go ahead, there you go. Right Peter Boy in Toyota in Tallahassee. Yes, Come sir. see me. We will take care of you. There it is. You heard the plug. You heard the plug coming from the source himself, Peter Bulwer. Last but not least, you were also, and I didn't know this, Pete. I didn't know, uh, you know, you, I know you were talented, but I didn't know you were camera-like talented, being able to get in front of a camera and be a part of a movie. Uh, but you were in the movie Brothers Keeper. What was that like? And do you have any plans in being in any movies in the near future? Yeah, man, that just kind of kind of fell into my lap, man. I, I I hope I hope that film never gets out, man. I just if you see my little acting role in that thing, my my kids got a hold of it. And they every time they do it, they laugh at me. They pause it and they rewind it about ten times till I'm about completely humiliated <laughs> watching the thing. But it was they were doing a local shoot around here, and they asked me if I wanted to participate in it. And I thought, yeah, shoot, I'll do that. I, I mean, and this was at the time when I was retiring, and just like, yeah. just like everyone else, it's most professional athletes, man. They're trying to get out and get on TV or, or do some films or something like that. So I was like, how hard can it be, man? I'm a, I'm gonna launch this Hollywood career, and it is not easy. Getting behind a camera and and trying to speak or act or do whatever, it takes it takes ability, it takes talent, and I realized very quickly it was talent that I did not have. You know, so <laughs> I'm one and done there, you know, and so that was a, it was a fun deal and I can check that one off the box. Uh, but again, um, hats off to the people that do it for a living because, man, it is a it's tough and it's tough to do it the right way. So I enjoyed it, but uh, I am done with that. So at least you've been able to do something a lot of people will never be able to do, which is partake in a movie. So you were good enough yep. to get that opportunity. So that says That's a lot. Right. Pete, thank you again for joining me here on The Rise. Pleasure's all mine. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Enjoyed it. Be sure to check in for more Rise shows and other original programming and memorable games on Origin Sports. I'm Bryant McFadden. Thanks for joining us.